GR1 race cars, the absolute pinnacle of Gran Turismo racing, and today we're going to try and build one out of your everyday road car. Now is this possible? Honestly, no. But with a bit of ingenuity, it might just be possible for us to outrace these cars today. So let's go take a look at the car that's going to help us with that. Introducing the Porsche 918 Spyder. Now we're rocking a ton of horsepower in this thing, and it's got four wheel drive. And trust me, those are the key parts of our strategy today. Without them, we wouldn't have a chance. Now I've set this tune up to work at Mount Panorama, which is where we're heading today, where it's going to be a three lap race on a three car grid, going up against professional difficulty GR1 race cars. So let's see how the Porsche got on. Sitting on the grid, it turns out we're going up against the nimble Toyota and the powerful Mazda. But I don't think they have any idea what's about to happen. As soon as the lights go green, our four wheel drive system catapults us out to the front of the grid. And after taking the first corner, we put all 946 horsepower to work, blasting off down the straight, leaving those GR1 race cars completely in the dust. But although we've built up a decent lead, we're now beginning our windy climb up the mountain. And corners are not our friends in this race. Basically, the strategy was to get in front early and then play defensively, holding the GR1 cars up through the corners and then powering away again on the final straight. But it hasn't taken long for our lead to be eaten away and those GR1 race cars are already nipping at our heels, just waiting for me to leave the slightest of gap so they can take the lead and we won't see them again. We've now reached the top of the hill, and the only thing worse than coming up is going down, because our lack of downforce is really going to give an extra advantage to these GR1 race cars. But it looks like they've missed their opportunity, and now we're about to hit the straights. So it's time for us to pull out a little bit of a buffer. Okay, Porsche. Let's show these GL1s what a real race car can do. Come on Porsche, power! Man missing my braking marker on the chase has really messed up my lead. In fact the Mazda is now making a move on the inside. And not just him, the Toyota as well. I'm back to last right before the end of the first lap. Now, we're going three abreast into the first corner. <laughs> Bound to end in disaster. But luckily, the loser of that one was the Mazda. Meaning we're still in the fight, and as soon as we put our pedal down, we shoot off into the distance, trying to reclaim some semblance of a lead before that uphill section begins. It looks like somehow the Mazda has managed to recover and worm his way back up into second place again. That's great. Hopefully he slows the Toyota down through the corner section. But that hope's quickly crushed because the Toyota makes an incredibly daring move on the inside, flying past the two of us and straight into the lead. But it's only a couple of corners from the straight. I mean, how far ahead could he possibly get? We come around Forest Elbow side by side with the Mazda, but his time is up because now we're on the straights and oh my god, how did that Toyota get so far ahead? But that doesn't matter, because this car is an absolute rocket. Just hopefully I don't miss the braking marker this time. Entering the final corner and the Toyota decides to make a dive on the inside. But a quick cross back later, and we've reclaimed that first from him. Nice try. We enter the final lap in first place, so another lap like the one we did before, 
and we might just be able to walk away with a win. Being in first means we also get to make the most out of this long straight, increasing our lead and building us a nice big buffer to work with. Well, that buffer didn't last very long. The GR1s are already right behind us. But due to the narrow roads and the fact that we're just going fast enough, there is no place for them to overtake. The Toyota proved me wrong by yet again flying through on the inside, either out of frustration or desperation. Either one causes them to end up on a wall. And while we don't get the position back, that allows us to stay right behind them, all the way up to the straight. Now that we're on the straight, it's as simple as putting our foot to the floor. And with that, we reclaim first, flying past at an incredible rate of speed. After that, we just need to successfully complete the chase. And hey, two out of three ain't bad. One corner to go now, so we place our car in a nice blocking position, taking a little shunt of frustration from behind, but easily keeping our lead and coming across the line. For a win. Suck it, GR1s.